Hello friends, in this video we're going to examine social metacognition in the subcategory of attitude strength. You may ask yourself, what is attitude strength? Well, attitudes uh, need to be defined first, and attitudes may be described as summary evaluations of the people, places, and things in our environment. Attitudes may or may not motivate our actions. Now, Sometimes there's a perception that if you have a strong attitude about something, that automatically motivates your actions. That is not the case. If you have a strong attitude about something, it is likely to motivate an action, but it may or may not do so. Attitudes may be very firmly entrenched, and these are known as strong attitudes. Attitudes may not be firmly entrenched, and these are known as weak attitudes. The strength or weakness of an attitude is known as attitude strength. So when we're referring to attitude strength, we're talking about the strength or weakness of an attitude. Now consider the following. Here we have a young lady in a pickup known as Brand X, and she loves Brand X pickups. This is a strong attitude. Here we have a young lady in a Brand X pickup, and she doesn't know about Brand X pickups. This is a weak attitude. The first one had a strong attitude about the pickup. The second one doesn't. So we might say that the opinion that they have of Brand X pickups being either strong or weak can be known as attitude strength. Now, a number of factors differentiate between the strength or weakness of an attitude. Consider the following. Certainty. The certainty is the degree to which a person is sure that the attitude is valid and correct. Importance. Importance is the degree to which a person cares about and attaches significance to an attitude. Knowledge. Knowledge is the amount of information acquired about the attitude object. And ambivalence refers to the degree to which the person experiences both positive and negative reactions to an attitude object. So keep these in mind, certainty, importance, knowledge, and ambivalence, because we're going to examine each of these in regard to attitude strength. Certainty, again, refers to the amount of confidence a person has in an attitude. It's about whether the person views the attitude as valid or correct. The following may influence the certainty of an attitude. Direct experience. First-hand experience reinforces attitude certainty. Uh, I laugh sometimes and say, I don't just know about that, I've lived it. If you have experienced something that has molded your attitudes, then that increases the certainty that you have that that attitude is correct. Actual and perceived attitude knowledge. Attitudes based on a great deal of information tend to be held with increased levels of certainty. And knowledge structure, the complexity of one's knowledge base also influences certainty. The number of distinct dimensions reinforces the certainty that you have that the attitude is correct. Uh, this might mean that I have experienced it today, I experienced it yesterday, I know that another person did it, I read about it in a book. All of the complexity of those different dimensions increase the certainty of the attitude. An actual and prior elaboration. Now elaboration is extensive thought about uh, about the attitude and extensive cognitive elaboration strengthens certainty. The more I have thought about it, the more I have considered it, the more I have weighed it, then the more likely I am to believe that the attitude is certain. Attitude accessibility and, atti and the accessibility of attitude supportive information kind of go hand in hand. The ease with which an attitude can be recalled strengthens certainty. Uh, is it right on the top of my head or is it buried down deep in my heart? Accessibility of attitude supportive information refers to the subjective experience of easily defending one's attitude against attack uh, from others or, or, or challenged by others. If it's easily for me to reach it and I've been able to defend it against uh, uh, discussion or attack from others, then I, I certainly believe that I'm more certain that the attitude is correct. Consensus is the extent to which others share the attitude, and that certainly affects my certainty. If other people believe the way that I believe, and we all have the same opinion, then I think my attitude is, is more likely to be valid. And this little one, online versus memory-based formation, 
Uh, online, you're probably thinking about computers. Uh, that's not what it's referring to. It might be referenced better as ongoing or or uh, a consistently happening formation of your attitude versus memory based. If you're living the things that are shaping that attitude through continual new experience, it is more likely to be a strong attitude than if it's just something that you recall from memory. And then, of course, the big one is personal match. People tend to be more certain about attitudes that match their own characteristics. If, it, if, it, if that attitude fits me, then I'm certainly more certain that it is correct attitude because how could I possibly be wrong? Now, importance refers to the amount of significant a person ascribes to an attitude. Attitude strength is affected by the certainty with which I, I view the validity of the attitude, but it is also impacted by the importance that I ascribe to the attitude. And, and consider the following. The first of these is self-interest. Uh, an attitude is important if, if I believe that it benefits me and has benefit to self. And it is more likely to uh, have strength based on importance if I deem it to be relevant to my social needs or my value system. And, and if I can identify with that attitude based upon a specific group that I'm part of, then all of those things tend to make me believe that the attitude is important. And if I deem it important, then I certainly prescribe more strength to that attitude. Knowledge refers to the person's sense of the amount of information he or she holds relating to the attitude. And, and please consider the following. Uh, objective knowledge is more powerful than subjective knowledge in building attitude strength. If I deem that knowledge to be objective and clear and, and held even by others, then it's much more relevant to my seeing the attitude as having strength than if it's simply based upon a subjective opinion. Elaboration is very important. Uh, again, we talk about extensive elaboration about an attitude increases my knowledge. The more I think about it, the more I reflect upon it. The more I study it, the more I'm going to know about it, and the more I know about it, then the more attitude strength that it's going to hold. And then the context and environment can affect my knowledge. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, it's hard to soar with eagles when you work with turkeys, and I laugh about that. But if you're in a context or an environment where knowledge about that attitude is important, then, then that, that uh, will cause you to want to learn it, and you'll learn more about it. And then when you learn more about it, your attitude strength will increase. And of course, the last one is important. And attitude importance can affect both objective and subjective knowledge. Uh, importance was the last category. But if we deem it important, then that's going to cause us to increase our knowledge about the attitude, which in turn will strengthen our attitude, uh, our, our attitude strength. Ambivalence refers to the reactions to an attitude, either positive or negative. Uh, conflicting evaluative reactions, the presence of both positive and negative reactions towards an attitude influences attitude strength. If I'm in an environment where there's a lot of conflict about the attitude, then I am more likely to take a position and to give strength to my position about that attitude. And interpersonal attitude conflict. If the attitude of, important, uh, of importance uh, is important to others differ from self-attitude, the individual can experience ambivalence. If, if I don't really, if my attitude differs from the others, you know, I, I don't know. It's going to affect the strength of my attitude. And of course, doubt about my attitude base is going to weaken my my attitude, my uh, my acceptance of the attitude. Well, when people have to consider the source of a message rather than the substance of the arguments presented, greater ambivalence is likely. Now, what this means is, is that if you're in a you're in a place where the the messenger is questioned, then you may not have a strong opinion about the message. And I think that happens a lot. As a matter of fact, in logic, uh, one of the fallacies of logic is called poisoning the well. In other words, you discredit the messenger so you don't have to answer the message. But if you, if, you, if you have doubt about the source of an attitude, then that attitude is certainly going to be weaker. You will have more ambivalence towards it.
Uh, implemented goals. And, and I want you to think about this, that people tend to promote their own goals and ideas. If the attitude is the attitude that belongs to you, you may, and it meets your goals and your ideas, then you're going to not, you're going to react to it strongly, or, and which is going to increase attitude strength. But if that attitude belongs to someone else and fits their goals rather than yours, then it's more likely that you will be ambivalent towards it. So this discussion has, has talked about attitude strength, and it would be inappropriate of me not to mention uh, that, that I'm greatly indebted to information provided in the following source. And this is a, a chapter in the book called Social Metacognition, and it's called Metacognitive Determinants of Attitude Strength. And I certainly recommend to you that if you want an extensive text on social metacognition that you ought to consider this this book. It is it's very good. I've enjoyed reading it and I've drawn much of the material from this video from chapter two. I want to thank you very much for your patronage. Uh, I appreciate your, your giving time to look and listen to these videos. As always, may the odds be ever in your favor unless, of course, we're in the same event that it's ever man for itself. Have a great day.